So, Eric, maybe fill us in about stratification has been in the industry or has been talked about for the last couple of years. You know, definitely uh, prolonged practices of no-till. That was a very common theme of test every two inches, see where stratification goes. I think what's very interesting is um, you dove into that, you did the test, and share more about what you found and um, maybe some concepts that you have from okay. that. So we've been fortunate. We had a, a third party doing research on our farm for probably the last 10 to 12 years. And part of his research, it was K and zinc and et cetera. But all the plots got a 12 inch soil sample divided on two inch increments. So we had a zero to two, two to four, et cetera, through the whole profile. And what we saw was very high concentrations of nutrients in the top four inches and a decreasing level as you went down. Um, in my in my past, I've, I've seen that before, but we knew we had it here on the on the farm, and so we were curious: were we going to be able to get all those nutrients into our plant in a drier year? You know, deeper in the roots are going deeper to pull the moisture. Where are they getting their nutrients from? Yeah. Um, and so I, I really thought we had a problem. You know, it, did we need to deep band our fertilizer? Um, what did we need to do to get that nutrient where the moisture was so we could get it into the plant late season? Um, fast forward a few years, I was trying to think how we were gonna approach this. We were conventional tillage at the time with a little bit of no-till, but how, how were we gonna address it? Was it a moldboard plow and putting a plow down out and rolling that all down 10 to 12 inches, mm-hmm. something like that? And I had a customer when I was an agronomist in Iowa that a bachelor corn on corn loved to plow. He had a 4960 and it was straight piped and you know just loved to sit in that thing and plow 14 inches deep every year. And so his ground had been corn on corn and plowed for 35 years at yep. least, maybe 40 plus. Wow. Um, wow. And so I, I called my, my counterpart down there and said, are you still working with this individual? And he said, yeah, yeah, in good relationship with him. I said, could you go and ask him if it'd be all right to go out and pull some soil samples in his field in graduated increments? Yeah. I mean, if, if, if rolling that complete profile over every year wasn't mixing our nutrients, yep. then I needed to find a new plan because I, I knew that this would be an answer to that question. And so he went out, pulled the same type of samples, took a 12 inch core, divided the cores into two inch increments, and then bagged them individually and sent them off to the lab. And what we found was his soil was stratified just as severely as ours was. And so that got the wheels turning. I'm like, how, what's going on here? Why, yeah. why is his soil stratified just like ours when he's putting broadcast P and K on the surface and then plowing down every year. Yep. Um, what I finally decided was that it had to do with where's the oxygen in the soil, where's the biology active at, yep. and where are we re- making those nutrients plant available? And that was all in the top four inches. A- as you got deeper, we got anaerobic and all of those solubilizing uh, microorganisms weren't active at those deeper levels. Yes. So it wasn't a nutrient at depth issue. It was a bio- biological activity issue. The lo- lower biology, the deeper you go, which isn't shocking because we're talking about oxygen, water table, etc. Yeah. Um, can, third grade, can you explain stratification? The concept that has been talked about in the industry is definitely when you think of no-till okay no disruption Mm -hmm. okay you're doing a dry program p and k well p for sure takes a very long time to move down the soil i think it's like what they usually say is a centimeter a year okay so it's very slow so if you're applying p every year okay and it's only moving with just say a centimeter a year after five years what you applied five years ago has only went down five centimeters okay which is in that top four inches right Mm -hmm. So the theory was, or the thought process was, we're applying all this dry fertilizer and it's not getting down to the root zone, okay? So 
that top two inches, top four inches has an over concentration of P, mm. then you go lower, it's a very lower concentration. But when you're taking a zero to eight soil sample and you're not breaking it apart, your P may look fine. But 75% of your P is in that top two inches. Got it. Now, kind of piggybacking off this story, I agree. It's the biology in the top zero to four inches. Also, I think about the timing of the samples. Were they both done in the fall? Actually, they were spring on, awesome. on our firm because the spring samples were um, done prior to the plot layout or okay. as, as they laid out the plots every spring. And I, I think the samples in Iowa, if I remember right, were a June or July. Okay, okay, well throws away one of my theories, but I still get to the point of microbes, when they have oxygen, you ha you're dealing with aerobic um, bacteria, their job is to release nutrients. And it's very clear, it doesn't matter what your tillage practices are, that's what they're trying to do on those top four to six inches. I think really the question is, is how do we get more release deeper into the profile, you know? but I also think we're dealing with barriers too that mother nature, like this year, wet year, it's gonna be a little bit easier to have that aerobic zone farther down. So with that biology, what can we be doing in season to maybe get it another half inch down <laughs> or give or help the populations release even more nutrients in that top zero to four inches? Well, you talk about what's the first one to dry out, zero four. Yep. And so you're, we, yeah, we talk about water, but as we chase water, we're losing, you know, biological activity, reducing our nutrient av availability. Well, and I even talked, when we did Lance Gunderson's podcast, yeah. if your plant's showing stress, water stress, you know that biology is in water stress. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mother Nature has to be on your side too. I felt like I've oversaid this quote the last three, three weeks, but I'm going to say it again. 80% of yield is determined by weather. Yeah. Okay. And it's not just because, oh, if it's good weather, good moisture, the crop does good. It's because your bugs do good yeah. <laughs> in that weather as well. Yeah. So the system is cranking. You're getting mineralization. One of my, one of the guys that I feel like really is probably the most like honed in on trying to move the needle. I mean, dude, he's got more tanks and hoses on his planter <laughs> than anyone I know. It's, it's crazy. Um, but I asked him, I was like, dude, straight up, how much do you think we can affect yield with our applications? Like strictly application. He's like, I don't think we'll, I don't think, he's like 20% if everything's perfect. He's like, I think that is the max you'll ever reach, ever. He's, I was like, what do you think real, like what do you think average realistic is? He goes, seven to 10. He goes average. Right. He's like, I think you'll get 12% maybe, but you know. I agree with that 100%. And to build on that, so why are we putting all of our nutrients out prior to running the planter across the field? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know. Expound, expound on that. Like from what you've seen to what you've, cha what you've changed in your operation. Well, we all want to be a, a low cost producer. And if we're, we know that our inputs other than seed are only influencing yield seven to 12%, let's say, um, why, we don't know if we need them, at least here in South Dakota where we're fully dependent on mother nature, either too much rain or not enough rain, et cetera. Um, having the ability to put those nutrients on later, you know, every week you gain in the season, you gain more knowledge about what the potential of that crop is. Yep. So being able to address it at V6, V8, V10, and then further into the re reproductive stages, you, you've got a better idea of what your actual potential is. You know, every day you're ga gaining new knowledge about that field. So I, th I thought it was interesting last night you were talking. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.